Hello, everyone. This is Cantor Gaston Bogomolny. Um, <clears throat> so I'm here because I didn't have the chance to talk to you when uh, last week we were running out of town, uh, time. <laughs> and uh, I just want to share something with you that uh, that's mainly what I want to share, which is about something about Rosh Hashanah and <clears throat> leadership, self-care and mental health and spiritual health. And also Hashbon and Nefesh, you know, we'll just uh, have a little bit of everything that uh, that the High Holidays will bring to us. I just want to start with giving you a little anecdote. Um, back in 2014, I used to live in Massachusetts and uh, I was the country, full-time country of a synagogue. I was also a fila leader and specialist of uh, the Jewish Day School Schachter in Boston. And also was, uh, was did a lot of things, you know, Camp Ramah and uh, as the, as the Roshida. And then uh, I was also the president of the New England Board of Cantors. Um, the, the, the reason I mentioned this is because uh, I went through a divorce at that moment. And it was a very difficult divorce. And I remember my kids, you know, being around me. And I remember... Um, for me, you know, to 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 be with the uh, with the synagogue, but at the same time, my my brain and my my head was not there. Um, I was really disturbed. I was very distracted. I was very preoccupied and worried about a lot of different things. You know, my divorce, and I started little by little, without knowing, started to get um, depressed. But I just didn't really really know about. It. I, I didn't realize that's that's mainly what will happen. And I ended up, you know, long story short, I ended up here in, in Florida. <clears throat> I also remarried and everything. But I remember very well that as a head of the house and as the head in my mind, my head was not working. Nothing else was really working on me. Um, and, and I did tell you this little anecdote because um, this little relationship between our own head and Rosh Ashana, right? Head with Rosh and uh, Rosh Hashanah. And um, <clears throat> so one of the things that I, I want to, to mention is, is this idea that if our Rosh is not really healthy, if we are not really in the right place, none the, the part of our bodies will do. As you realize very well, the whole nerve system is in our brain, but it doesn't have, you don't have a place. When you have a stomach ache, it comes through here and it tells the, the stomach that it hurts. If it hurts your knee, if it hurts your back or anything, you know, your 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 nervous system will tell you about that, but there is no one part in the, in the head that it says specifically, you know, where it is in your head. It will really manifest in a different place. Um, so in order to understand how Rosh and what Rosh has to do also with our soul, right? The Moach, we have the left and the Kaved, right? Which is the brain, the heart, and also <clears throat> the liver, <clears throat> which if you think about Moach, left, and, and also Kaved, you get the word Melech. Uh, many Kabbalists, you know, and mysticists, you know, they will really start. And when they do meditation, they will meditate Moach Lev Kaved. Now, there is a lot of things going on there. So one of the things I want to share with you, it's a, it's a picture of that shows in Kabbalah where, or the, you know, where the third level, what nor the level of Neshama is in our body. Just to understand a little bit, our nation, what we call our soul, it's, uh, you know, based on and according to Kabbalah, it's, uh, it, it has five different levels, right? So <clears throat> then you get the level, the lower level is called nefesh, which could be in psychology called the ego. Then you get also the ruach, which is kind of our feelings. That's what the left, the ego the ego mainly is represented by the kaved, by the liver, kind of like the the, the low instance and, and the basic instance and the basic needs. Um, then the Ruach is kind of the left, it's all the feelings and emotions, and those are part of that. And then we get Neshama, which is all our mental um, 
mental body. And then we have two more, Chaya and Yechida, which are more in the uh, in the etheric uh, um, um, fields. And But they're not part of our body. So I want to share this picture with you. Uh, maybe you get to, to see what I'm talking about here. So um, here is our... Let's see here. So here's all the 10 Sfirot. I don't know how much, you know, some of you might know a little more of Kabbalah or not, but these are like, like you know, in, in Hinduism, Buddhism, it's called chakras, you know, usually like that. You have 10 Sfirot, 10 centers of energy in our, in our body instead of just seven, like the chakras. And here is the Nefesh, as I mentioned to you before. Then you have the Ruach, uh, which is the astral body. And then you also have the mental body right? So the mental body is the neshama. The neshama is that part of our soul that is related, straight related to um, to what we call the divine spark, right? So that's the part, the godly part that we get is the kind of like the device that gets with the router, right? To the creator. And that's where we need to accomplish most of the time when we get connected, when we feel connected to, to something that is more of oneness and we get connected with the world and we other neshamot and with other souls, that usually comes from that level of the neshama. So as you see here, the 10 sfirot are represented like in a human body. And then you see that in the kind of like in this level we get in this triangle is that where we get the neshama. So guess what? That's the Rosh, right? So look, just you know, pay attention to this. The Neshama, which is the godly part of us, you know, the, the divine spark of us is really around our head. And it's not, um, it's not even a coincidence that the word Neshama is, is, is related to the word Neshima, right? Neshima means breathing, breath. Uh, so when you do a neshima muka and you know deep breathing as we do in many practices uh, of healing and yoga and, and prana and you know even in, in, in Jewish mysticism and meditation you do so when you are like all around like this and your head is really 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 chaotic and confused and tobabo and it's all really all messed up the main thing that you need to do is to reconnect how you reconnect to your Wi-Fi with a router or Ethernet is with your Neshima to connect with your Neshima to really connect with the creator and then really align. Now, as you know very well, breathing is very important not only because the Neshima, the breath, will connect with the Neshima. Also, when you are agitated and you are angry and upset, what usually happens, you... <laughs> Right, it's also like a cutting up and chopped type of breathing. So getting the breathing back on place is a very, very important part of it. So everything comes from the rush. In this area is where the neshama will come to connect with the breathing. So it's so important, you know, when you are like this, that you connect and you breathe. It's free. It's free. Nobody can charge you for that for breathing. So um, so what I want to do right now with you, which I was going to do it anyway, so to understand a little bit, let's try to recap a little bit. It's all about connection. It's all about that our body is really, our, our head is so important because it's the neshama that needs to influence the ruach, which is the emotions, the feelings, and the ruach eventually will influence the ego. If the ego takes over, then we are like this, right? We know the ego is just a manager of the of the building, is the manager of the business. It cannot be the owner. You are the owner, and your feelings cannot go all around either. So that's why you need the connection, no mentally so much, but also the connection with the creator, with the divine spark, with the godly part who you are. When everything goes that way, you just influence then the feelings, and the feelings can really tell the ego right what to do the nefesh what to do and then you don't have to really do impulsively and and do just over reaction you can really do things just by thinking and doing it in the right way now it's very very important that we understand this uh now 
one of the things that I want to mention to you is that the Rosh of Rosh Hashanah also is so important for connection. Most of the time, we think that Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and maybe Hagei Tishrei, you know, just until Simchat Torah is kind of connected. Maybe Simchat Torah not so much, you know, but it's connected with Sukkot. Maybe Sukkot is not connected with Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah, but Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we know it's connected. It's connected with the month of Elul, you know, towards Rosh Hashanah, and then 10 more days, and then we get Yom Kippur. And then at least we call those the High Holidays. Now, the Kabbalists had it very, 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 very um, clear about the connection of every single holiday. So Rosh Hashanah, we know it's one of the four um, times that we call the new year. Uh, some people think it's the creation of the world. Some people believe that the, that really the creation of the world was the 25th of Elul. And then first of Tishrei, which is uh, Tishrei 1, is Rosh Hashanah, which would be the creation of Adam, of the person, of the human being, of the first man. Now, uh, but there's a big problem, right? Because as educators, we think that all the holidays are separated. And in, in retrospective, if you really think about it, there's many, many ways, and we can talk about this in another time, but there are many, many different ways to connect really Rosh Hashanah till the end or till till the start of Rosh Hashanah again of the year after. All the Hagim, all the holidays should be connected. Your life should be also well connected. Your head should be connected with your whole body. So you are the head of the schools. You are the principals. You are it. If you, real Rosh, you as a head, you're not connected. You're not settled. You are not relaxed and calm, and you are all confused and and in chaotic mode, and your mood goes back and forth, and you cannot really balance your life, your personal life, with the, with the, with 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 work, and that's a big issue. So it's so important you as the head, as the rush of the whole department of your preschools, of your schools, that you are really focused, centered, that you are really in the right and a good place. Now, remember when you were, um, when you were eating the other day, and I was going to comment on this, but I then I had to leave, but, you were eating by, by the time you were having the conversation with Joy and you're having the conversation, uh, or you're having a meeting. You're still having a meeting, but you were eating. And most of the time now eating takes really, it's almost like we don't need to eat sometimes. So we eat, but then we don't really take the time to connect with the food. And many things happen too. If we live in the city, we don't get the chance to really even connect with the trees and the, uh, you know, in the outdoors because we are so much inside of buildings. When we eat, you were eating, not only you were not paying so much attention to what you were eating, you were just eating because it was 12 o'clock, one o'clock, and then it's just to ingest something, you know, and, and then digest. But you were eating also with silverware. Do you know, and you know many cultures eat with their hands? And the reason they eat with the hands is because uh, the... They they want to connect with uh, they want to connect with the food, right? I don't know if you've tried it or not, and you might think, oh my god, the, the, you know bad manners, you know, not eating with the silverware, but start eating with your hands, because you can also uh, relate to the temperature of the food. You can even put it in your mouth before even before even you ingest it, before even you swallow it you had the chance to let the food be placed and settle in your mouth, in your tongue, and you'll see the experience will be totally different. But that's about connection again. Everything is connection. I just been talking to you for the last 14 minutes about connection, and that's so important. Now, um, I want to do what is called a scanning, a screening of where you are. And what we're going to do is that um, 
we're going to do self-awareness and I'm going to talk about 10 different pillars, right? Pillars of your life. And I want you to take something to write on and, and, and just check yourself. It's a self-evaluation. It's a self-evaluation of yourself where you are. So the first pillar, and you have to tell me this, but you write it down from zero to 10, okay? 10 be the most um, optimal. And then zero, of course, is very, very, very bad. But it can always be changed. So pillar number one is how you think, how you self-assess that you're doing in the pillar, in this area in your life, love and couple relationship. Love and couple relationship. And then you write down. The second pillar, the second area in your life will be career and profession. How do you think you are? From zero to 10. The third would be spirituality and mind. The fourth, finances and work. Five, the fifth, family and home. Six, time for yourself. Seven, health and body. Eight, friends and social life. Nine, intimacy and sex. Ten, sleep. So those are the 10 pillars, the 10 areas of your life that I would like you to self-assess almost every week, every month if you need to, every other month as a mother. Those have to be very optimal. If you have a, an imbalance, then you detect where it is and you try to really balance it. These 10 pillars, 10 areas of your life should really be very balanced as much as possible. Otherwise, you as the rush and your own rush in your own house, your rush as the headmaster, your rush as the rush of your school is not really functioning altogether. And then all might be in balance, might be very focused on one thing and not so much on the other. We are all humans, we are human beings, and we need to take care of ourselves so important you need to take care of yourself it cannot be work 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 no sleep and and then you know getting into medicines no there's a lot of different techniques that can help you to really get what you need to get so i hope you get the idea that what i try to convey today what i try to um um to not only convey but also share with you this is not easy, but it's also not difficult. And it's totally achievable. I want you to be aware that as we start the new year, the Rosh Hashanah, as we start the new creation of this human, of Adam, that we also take care of ourselves and then we can create and recreate Le Shannot, Shinoi, that's where Rosh Hashanah comes from, from changing. We need to do a Shinoi. If we need to make changes, this is the time. And the way you do these changes now, at the beginning of the school year, at the beginning of the holidays, is the way it can actually be for the whole, whole year. The school year and also all the cycle of holidays. I wish you really the best. I wish you Shana Tova Umetuka. I, I hope you get this message deep in your heart, deep in your soul. You take it seriously. You can really be a role model for also for your teachers. Thank you again. You know, again, my name is Gaston Bogomoni. I'm a cantor. Um, I'm the owner of Tal Community Mental Health Center and the president of Tim Tsum, the source of light. Um, and we do a lot of different um, 
workshops and as, as he says there you know you can probably be reading there are all the things we do workshop retreats and we work and integrate as i mentioned before we integrate the holistic approach of therapy as well with the conventional clinical approach we do individual couples family and groups therapy we also do coaching and as i said before holistic coaching as well and workshop for teachers i want to share with you just the last workshop that we did in august when we did the kickoff uh, at Beth Thora and also Temple Judea. And I want to share with you uh, some of the of the pictures that what we have done there. And um, so here we are really working with energy. We are working with our, with our energy. We're working with breathing, working different exercises uh, to open up, to relax, um, and to open up all the different ener you know, energy centers uh, we work really so much about breathing and understanding also what I was taking, telling you to you about self-care and uh, talking about how we see ourselves as teachers, why we became teachers, um, who are the good role models, changing and our energy back and forth, you know, just turning into something different, the shinoi, the change. Uh, we just had uh, very, very good workshops and, and I just... Uh, welcome any of you to contact me if you need to. I do tons of different workshops for every type of things. Every, most of them are really about self-care, understanding also the, you know, combining with holidays. And, uh, and, and also we do workshops as well for soulful parenting uh, as we were trained with Ayeka. And I'm free to, um, to have a conversation with you and explore what the needs of your school uh, are and really go from there. Um, I would love to have the chance to to have a conversation with you. And as I said before, thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you, Sage. Thank you, Cage. Thank you, Joy, and all of you for being there. And I mentioned also before, and I think that you got some information. We also have after school um, holistic programs for your kids. So we have things for parents, we have things for teachers, we have things for you. We have retreats that we can also be doing also for your teachers. We tailor, we can do it here outside in our um, in our um, in, in in our place here in Tipsum. Uh, which is uh, our little farm that we have. I just share with you uh, this, uh, these pictures. And I want to also share some uh, of, the, of the pictures from the retreats that we had and um, that are very, 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 very cool. So you get an idea um, of how things you know, are, are done and the things that we do here. So here's our place. Here's where we do also our retreats. We had a lot of working of, you know, working on inner child, working with teachers, understanding who we are, trying to heal the little wounds that we have, things that we need to forgive, self-forgiveness, self-love. Um, it's just lovely and a lovely place. And and I and I, I wish that we can do more and more of this. Uh, on a on a given day, on a given weekend, on a given Sunday, or even on Shabbat, we can do some stuff that could be very, very, very cool. And so I just wanted to share with you. I didn't want to live without being able to, 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 to really, uh, yeah, share. You know what we are doing, and for everyone in the, in, in the area, both in Broward and in Palm Beach County, and also Miami Dade County. So I wish you everyone Shana Tova Umetukal, Shana Tova Tikatevu and think about self-care, making a change, connecting Neshama, Neshima with the creator, and our head with the whole body, who influences who goes this way, doesn't go this way, okay? So you can be always centered in your access. Shana Tova. Bye-bye.